Lyman from Cincinnati, Ohio. Been raising Indian fantail since 1978. And uh, I'm a master breeder of the Indian fantails. I've got over 3,000 points showing. My father's got 1,200 points showing. So together we got about 4,300 points showing. I've won champions with whites, red saddles, um, ash reds. My dad's won with almonds, tail marks, and ribbon tails. So we've won 21 grand champions over the years and 17 reserve champions. We've had a really good time. But there's a lot of good birds here, a lot of good people, but my goal is to win a show with a yellow. Recessive yellow Indian fantail. Uh, the hardest thing with recessive yellow, this is a young cock, is to get these flights darker. But when this bird, before it molded, these flights, all the primaries, the 10, had white in them. And they will mold back in a darker color yellow. Uh, this one's darkening in. Hopefully when I will pull this again, it comes back in, they will darken up like the wing shield. That's the hardest thing to do, to get them flights dark. Second thing to do, it's hard to get that size tail on a yellow. Uh, there's nobody in the country that has them like this up to this date. The last three or four years, it shows that we've done well with them. We've got everybody now in a race to raise yellows. I've had them since 1988, recessive yellows. And the problem is, it's just a weaker gene pool in the Indians where they didn't live long or nothing. All through the 90s, we, me and my father was in it with me, and this was actually his color. I took them over from him in 1999. But the hardest thing was getting them to live. We would raise one or two a year, and they wouldn't live. But that's probably, the tail's out of condition, but that's that tail right there, 16 inches across, side to side. And that's about as big as, as you're gonna get. They want the Indians larger, but the problem with larger, you still want them being balanced to stand and station. Uh, the thing I'm working on now with these is I'm trying to put gold in them from the Archangel. And I actually have some gold that aren't full quality, full blood yet. But uh, my dream, I've got the most points showing Indian fantails, me and my father, of everybody. And I kind of got out of it for a while and just raised the trust, but I kept my Indians. My ultimate goal was to win a grand champion at a big show with the yellow. And my goal would be to win the one next year in San Diego. This bird's uncle just showed at the Great Western last year, and he really did well. But see, that bird will come to a pretty good station. His crest is low, and I'll pluck it up a little bit. But when they get this larger tail, what you want, when that bird's at station, you want the center of that eye to come down to the front tiptoe. You want the crest to go from the center of the beak to the top of the head. His is low, that's the big problem with him. I gotta pluck this out a little bit and bring this up. And I can show you Zed, how I can do that a little bit. You pull some of them out, and then you can bring it up. I don't want to pull too much out because by tomorrow it might relax. But when this bird's stationed, you want from the top of the head when it's stationing, you want an inch to two inches of top tail on the bird. You want an inch and a half to two inches from the back of the head to the tail. You want the tail held upright as close to straight up down as you can get it. But you don't want the tail laying back. You want the flights tucked up underneath the tail nicely. You want a wrap going from three quarter of a circle, which is the bottom part, to go from three quarter to come down to a seven eight circle. And he's, go he's getting pretty close to a seven eight tail. It took me 11 years, seriously, from 1990 to 2001. People don't realize, I had 22 tail feathers. To break that barrier and get them last three or four tail feathers on each side is just so hard to do. Because as you know, with recessive yellow, whatever you put it on, you're throwing it out the window. But it's a super bird. But if you go to the National in Salt Lake, or if you go to Lancaster, 
you're going to see an opener of this bird that if he'll show, he, he was going to win two weeks ago and the judge remarked about him so much, he put that bird over the internet next to the recessor red to one and he said that just a fabulous bird, but the bird would not show my yellow yearling cock. This guy here will show. Hi, this is Jerry Gagne, Foy's Pigeon Supplies, oldest pigeon supply company in the United States. When Danny Joe approached us about being a part of this great project, we were really excited. If you're looking for pigeon supplies, if you're looking for pigeons, I hope you'll give us a call. Foy's Pigeon Supplies, we're on the internet, just type in Foy's. Or if you'd like to call us, it's 1-877-355-7727. Ask about our 204-page all-color catalog. We'd be glad to send it to you. Color Pigeon Loss, featuring 28 breeds of fancy pigeons, high-performance Turner Rollers. We have birds available at all times. Capuchins, Saxon Monks, Saxon Priests, Swiss Crescents, Ice Pigeon, Saints, Frillbacks, Archangels, Starling, Figuritas, Old German Owls, Chinese Owls, Satinettes, Swallows, Saxon Shields, and much, much more. For breed availability, visit www.colorpigeons.com. For purchasing, pricing, and shipping info, call toll-free 1-800-527-0918. Murad Nagel, better known as Dr. Pigeon by his friends, is known by his one-eye cold treatment. It's called One Drop, One Time. It only takes one drop, it only takes one time. Every breeder needs at least one bottle of One Drop, One Time to keep in their loft for those nasty eye colds. They're available at Boys Pet Supply, New England Pigeon Supply, and Pro Flight Supply. And remember, the next time you buy pigeon supplies, be sure to include one bottle of one drop, one time. This is an English Carrier. It's an old classic breed developed in India. The origin was likely in Asia, and the English brought it over and uh, it's a tall pigeon, it's got to be very tall and erect, long legs, long neck, and it's supposed to stand very much at attention just like the bird is. You will see the nose, we call that a wattle, that's actually an enlarged nostril that's done through selective breeding and to eventually have the shape of a walnut. And the fleshy ring around the eyes are called uh, the eye sears and they have to be developed you want a nice straight neck like he's standing. Color is good on this bird as a red and the beak. The more modern carriers have a well-developed beak. You will notice it is thick. It has substance. It's not a spindly beak and that's exactly how we want them. The legs are powerful. The feet are somewhat large to support a bird like that to stand and they're really strong flyers. We call them English carriers but, and they were used to carry messages years ago, but the modern day homers were developed to carry messengers, but these pigeons kept the name carrier, even though they are now a show bird. I will pick the bird up now and show you some of the finer points on the bird as it's supposed to be. The main thing I want to point out on this pigeon here, this English carrier, is the development of the waddle. This is a good development for a young bird. Uh, many of them aren't quite as well developed, but eventually this is supposed to look like a walnut. That is the desired shape. And the top is supposed to be somewhat like a cauliflower, tight, not too loose. And when you touch it, you see firmness to it. Then if you look at the beak, the lower mandible is strong and so is the upper mandible. It actually requires a little filing on the upper mandible so it'll be able to close it nicely. And then the eye sears are well developed, the eye color is good. And that's the main reason that you would pick up a carrier, to look at some of the features in the head. Otherwise, you basically judge it by standing in the cage because station, stature, and the whole presentation is so important, so you really judge most of the bird in the cage. Okay, we, we had talked about sex linked genes. Now we're going to talk about Duluth. Everybody has seen a silver or a yellow bird, and that is a Duluth. Now, what I've got in this case is a blue chick. 
And <clears throat> this little blue check hen is just what we see every day. Now, you add the loot to the bird and it will become silver. And actually what it does is dilutes the color. I guess that's why they came up with dilute. But now this is a sex link gene and it is a, would have to be called it a recessive sex link gene. Now, what can happen, and we've said, talked about this before, anything that's sex linked, if it's a hen, she will be what you're looking at. So this is a, a young hen, so she is silver, and, and because she's dilute and she's blue, she's silver. Now, if you breed this silver hen to a blue cock, now the blue cock has two sex chromosomes. Now this is where we start understanding, you know, how the, the, the two sex links can come, I mean two factors can come into it. You breed this bird to a blue check cock, Every cock bird you raise will be blue check, but it will carry the dilute gene on one chromosome. And it has to be double factor dilute for the cock to be colors because it is recessive to intense. So that's where the recessive comes in. So you can take a, a dilute bird breed to a blue cock. You will have blue cocks that carry dilute. Now this blue cock can be bred to any color hen and you will raise blue check hens, you will raise silver hens. Now, I'm gonna try to keep it simple and not you know, get real, but the only way you can get a silver cock bird is if you have a bird that is carrying the gene and you can take, you, your hen is the color, then you can raise silver cock. So people ask me all the time, how do you raise a yellow cock? How do you raise a silver cock? Any time that you raise a silver cock bird, since the hen contributes one chromosome to that cock, she has to be dilute, and the cock has to at least carry it. Now, I don't think we need to go any further to complicate it, but if you'll just think about these words and understand them, and you may have to look at it a couple of times, but, but, but you'll grasp the concept. Blue diluted is silver. It's that simple. You've got a blue check bird. You've added dilute gene. This gene is recessive. It will make a silver hen silver only because she carries one, one gene, and that gene is diluted. In a cock bird, it carries two genes. So it has to have both genes with with the dilute factor on them. So in order to raise a silver cock or a yellow cock, the hen must be silver or yellow, whatever you're seeking, and the cock must at least carry it. Now that is the, the simple version of it. Thanks for watching Color Pigeons and More, the Pigeon TV show that covers all aspects of the pigeon hobby. Today's show has been brought to you by Foy's Pet Supplies since 1887, America's oldest bird supply company. Dr. Pigeon Proven Pigeon Products, 18 to choose from. Color Pigeon Lofts featuring 27 show breeds and high performance rollers. Be sure to tune in for our next episode. Be looking for us right here on the web.